Hello everyone. Welcome to this new video lecture series on AXI 4. So let's start. AXI basically stands for Advanced Extensible Interface. It is one of the AMBA protocols. AMBA stands for Advanced Microcontroller Bus Architecture. First release of AXI was done in 2003 with the name of AXI 3. So let's talk about the interface first. So interface is something that allows us allows the device this device to communicate with other device. So this is actually a group of signals or we can say set of communication wires okay so if we see some examples suppose this is a cpu there is a usb device connected to it then these two devices will connect with each other via an interface that is a set of communication wires or a group of signals and this interface will follow some rules of the interface itself so that interface will be a usb interface on a similar lines, we have an AXI interface. A group of signals or a group of communication wires that follows the rules of AXI interface. Furthermore, we'll see that these interface communication wires, these can be grouped together. Okay. And this should be called as channels. This grouping of signals will be called as channels in AXA okay, based on the purpose they are even used for. For suppose these groups of signals are used for transmitting data to the device we can say it as a data channel or if they are being used for utilizing the address into the bus they will be called as an address channel. Okay. We will see that. Moving forward. Uh, let's look into the definition of the AXI. So, an AXI is basically a on-chip protocol or an on-chip communication protocol. That simply means AXI will be utilized in communication between two or more devices that exist inside a chip. So, at an atomic level, there could be two devices. One of them will be called as an AXI master. The other one will be called as an AXI slave. These will be interacting with each other through an AXI interface. Okay. And this interface will be following the rules of AXI 4. Now, this is not the only configuration we could have there can be other configurations as well wherein we could have multiple masters and we could have multiple slaves as well so if we look into the multi master multi slave configuration we could actually have two approaches the first one we'll see later the first let's come to the second one that is a custom design based on our requirement suppose say we need two masters and four different slaves we design a master axi master that could have four interfaces in order to interact with four different slaves okay but there is a problem with this design tomorrow our requirements can change tomorrow let's say we come across a design that requires one more slave then what we need to do is we need to change our design of the master and we have to accommodate one more interface here and this design will not be generic enough okay the second approach to do this is use a device called as an axi interconnect have a let's design a master having only a single interface but an interconnect intelligent enough to decide on which master is going to interact with which slave and if we this AXI interconnect will have multiple interfaces now this 
x for this x i master this is working as actually a x i slave also for this also it's acting as a x i slave again this is acting as x i master for this slave and so on right so with the help of the interconnect we can actually design a master that actually includes a single interface and we can accommodate multiple masters and multiple slaves with these devices now the benefit of using this is even if our design actually changes tomorrow we can accommodate multiple slaves and multiple masters across it so this is the importance of an interconnect device now how it works is and if an axi master wants to interact with an axi slave s0 m0 wants to interact with the slave s0 what a master will do is will send an address that address will be called as a logical address so if we consider two masters m0 and m1 and we have two different bits for each for m0 and m1 identification so here will be two bits suppose this is indicating that m0 master wants to interact with the slave devices that will be four bit suppose interacting with s0 and an address this address is which address the address which the master wants to write or read this address actually belongs to some memory address inside a slave s0 so the axi master m0 will provide this combination of master id slave id and the address to the interconnect interconnect will be intelligent enough to determine okay the master m0 wants to interact with the slave s0 now i will transmit this address to this slave interface and this is how the communication will begin within the this two master and uh, sorry a master and a slave now there could be a situation wherein master m0 and master m1 both want to interact with the same device same slave s0 at the same point of time that is m0 and m1 putting the transactions giving the transaction to the interact saying that we both want to interact with the same slave at a particular point of time now this is ideally not possible because we have a single address with single data bus so an interconnect should also be able to prioritize the communication and will it will have an arbitration logic okay so this was a brief idea about the interconnect and how communication happens now let's start with the the basic atomic level communication that is between two devices an axi master and an axi slave so the first question that comes to our mind is who is going to be the master and who is going to be the slave and or the other way how we decided that this guy is going to be the master and this guy is going to be the slave for this system so the a basic idea is to the the device that will have an authority to put a write or a read command in the axi interface will be the axi master by an authority means axi master can always command the axi slave to do a write on a particular memory address or a read on a particular memory address but a slave cannot do it vice versa okay so if we see an example we have a processor right? a processor computes do its computing and everything and finally puts its data for the storage into the memory so how it does it does it by a method of a write command or a store command and similarly if it processor wants to read a data from the memory it simply gives a read command or a load command to the memory but the opposite is not possible that means the processor is having the authority to put a write or a read command on the memory but a memory cannot say tomorrow that okay i want to write it in your in your in the 
memory can't say that the memory wants to do a write on the processor's register, right? So it all depends upon the authority who, which of the devices having the authority to do a write or a read. So basically it depends upon the, how our design looks like, okay? So let's see the signals that we have in the AXI, okay? So these are the two signals called as the global signals. One is the clock and the other is the reset. So clock is a reference on which the master and a slave will interact with each other. So by an interaction, we mean that one component putting the information into the bus called as driving and the other component reading the information from the bus that is known as sampling. So that reference has to be within the some clock and that reference is the passage of the clock. So in an AXI system, always the driving or the sampling of the signals or the information will always happen at the passage of the clock. Okay. So this act as a reference for the communication. Okay. Now there is a second signal named as A reset. This is A reset N. That's a active low signal and it works as a system reset. That means up till the system is under reset, there will be no communication happening between a master and the slave. There are two important properties of this reset signal. First, it is an active low and the two properties are the synchronous assertion and synchronous deassertion. So it's a re active low signal. So what the assertion of reset means when it goes from high to low. What an asynchronous assertion means is the point at which the signal a reset and will go from high to low, the system will come under the reset situation. So from here to here, the system, AXI system is under reset. But on the other side, it talks about synchronous deassertion. That means when the system wants to go out of the reset, the system, what it will do is it will deassert its reset that is going from low to high. Okay, but this synchronous, this as a deassertion is actually synchronous. So it will happen only when the passage of the clock comes. So it will be this point of time when the system will be out of reset. Okay. So up till this point of time also, the system was in reset only. Okay. So now moving forward towards the AXI4 channels. So we discussed that there is an interface existing between the master and the slave in AXI. That interface is known as AXI4. That interface basically means communication lines or communication wires existing between two, these two devices. These communication lines will be grouped together based on their functionality and they are called as channels. So the lines that carries information about address of a write transaction is known as a write address channel. Similarly, the lines that carries data for a write transactions are known as is known as a write data channel. Similarly, the those lines that will be carrying information about the write response, they will be called as a write response channel. Okay, so they are divided into a right this event will happen with the help of three different channels. These are a right address channel, a right data channel and a right response channel. So how a, a master communicates to a slave that it wants to do a right is first it uses the AW. This is represented by AW that is called as a right address channel. It uses the master uses the right address channel put to put the address and the control information and it will be received by the slave interface slave and after that this master will put the right data that it wants to put at a particular memory address that was been specified in the right address channel 
and the slave will put try to put that data into the into its memory the address was of which was been specified by the aw channel okay then the master wants to know about what happened to the transaction that it sent whether it was a success or it was a failure right so a slave will send back the response saying that whether the transaction that you have given to me was a success or was a failure so that will be indicated to the master by the response right response channel okay similarly we have cha different channels for read as well and there are two read read channels okay one is the read address channel and the other is the read data channel again the definition remains same the lines that carries the address and control information about the read will be known as the read address channel and this is represented by ar sim on the similar lines the lines that carries data for a read transaction they are known as a read data channel now one can ask why we don't have a third channel in this read response channel now this is because there is a difference in the direction so the read data channel itself is giving the information from the slave to the master so it can directly put a response in the read data channel only so the response will also be moving from moving with the read data itself so we don't need a additional read data, read response channel here okay now let's move forward to the hand shaking part so up till now we discussed that communication between the axi system or a axi master and a slave happens at a reference that reference is the positive edge of the clock along with that one thing to remember is if we see the master and the slave as a source and destination means one will be the transmitter and the other will be the receiver right the information one part either the master of the or the slave will transmit and the other person master or the slave will receive it okay so these devices won't be interacting forever that means at some point of time these might be doing some other work and at some time they will be idle also okay right? so whenever the source wants to interact with the destination it puts it's valid in for valid signal high in order to tell the destination that i am putting a valid signal i am putting a valid information in the bus okay at the next passage after which the valid was asserted from this point the destination can read this information in present in the bus okay now the destination might not be ready to receive this signal this information that is present on the bus at the same point in at which the information is presented to it right so the destination will keep its ready signal down okay once it is ready to receive the information it puts the ready signal high and at the next passage from where from where the ready signal was asserted the destination will be able to receive that signal okay so this is the point where destination will be ready to receive will be able to receive this information and the moment the destination has received the information the information can be deasserted or removed by the source okay okay so what we understood is whenever the source want to put a information or want to interact with the destination it has to put the valid signal high the first passage of the clock after the valid was asserted the information that is present in the bus will be can be read by the destination now the destination will be asserting its ready down until unless it is ready for communication once it's ready for communication it asserts its ready signal high and the first passage after the ready is asserted the communication ends 
that means the destination has received all of the information that was present in the address bus or the whatever bus it was okay the use of ready for master or a source is that the master will keeps the keep the information intact information unchanged until and unless it sees the ready coming in so this is the first case wherein the master asserted or the source asserted the information and it is waiting for the destination to assert its ready signals so that master is confirmed that the information that i sent was been received by the destination properly okay now there could be other cases as well at the first case master was uh, sorry the source was waiting now in the second case the destination already because the destination was idle destination device was in an idle situation it was not doing anything it already kept the ready high so that it can receive the information at any point of time whenever the source asserts the information a valid information okay so the ready is already asserted now it is waiting the now who is waiting destination is waiting for the source to assert the information now the source asserted the moment the source asserted the information and a passage comes comes the information was been immediately received by the destination okay so this is the second case when the destination was waiting for the information the third case can be when none of them is waiting both the source put the valid information at a point okay and the ready also asserted its the destination also asserted its ready signal and the moment the passage comes the information gets received by the destination okay so these are the this is the valid hand ready handshake mechanism that is used by all of the channels the signal names can vary but the process remains same so before we go into the transactions and write and read command let's discuss about something very important that is called as the burst transfer so first of all we need to know about some of the definitions so what is mean by a transaction basically it means a write or a read okay that will have its meaning when the write actually starts and when it ends so that complete the starting and to ending of the write starting of the write to the ending of the write is known as one transaction similarly starting of the read to the ending of the read command is known as one transaction okay transaction is not similar to transfer a burst or a beat or a transfer they are synonyms they mean same thing what is meant by a transfer suppose this is a data bus so the if we talk in when we, whenever we talk about a bus transfer we talk about the data bus we are talking about the data or the data bus okay we are talk when we talk about the transfer we are talking about data transfers okay so if you see uh, let's understand what is a transfer so if you see this is in suppose an n bit data bus then then the maximum size of the transfer that i can make to it at one time is n bits correct this is the width of my data bus right that's n bits so the maximum amount of the data that i can transfer in it at one single shot is n bits correct okay so how the uh, as we seen that how a transfer is made passage is required that is necessary a valid should be high and a ready should be high valid will be high from the source destination will set up its ready high in order to receive the information okay now the information is data so for one transfer we need all these things okay so this is the data bus data in the data bus okay so this is the width of this data can be at max one transfer it is showing correct 
at this passage, this transfer can happen and the maximum width of the this data can be n bits. Correct. Now, if the source want to drive more information, it can drive more data bits to it. Now, this is known as a bit. Okay. The one transfer or a bit that is similar thing. Okay. So for one bit transfer or one data transfer, what we need is again the similar idea. A clock passage should come and valid ready should all be high along with the correct data. Okay, then the one transfer will happen. Now the source can transfer more information by putting its valid high again and destination putting its ready high. Again, the next passage, the next data comes. Okay. So already the valid ready was high at this passage. So the source actually changed the information, changed the data. And these are known as beats. Now these are beats that are occurring continuously at passage with valid and ready getting high. Okay. So these are n number of beats and this Phenomena is known as a burst transfer. For a single write, we are giving multiple data transfers into, into the destination. That is known as the burst transfer. And these individual transfers are known as bursts. Okay. So, and this is part of a complete write or a read transaction. This B0, B1, B2 are representing bits or burst. Okay, so the communication in an AXI happens in form of burst. Obviously, a one burst, a single burst is also possible, but generally multiple bursts are we also being seen in an AXI transfer. A write command will result in multiple bursts or multiple beats of data. Okay, so if we see in this diagram, this is B1, B2 to B7, seven different beats being transferred at these passages. Okay, this is the diagrammatic representation. Now what is happening is the maximum data that you can transfer through a n bit data bus is n b n is how much n bits right. Now when such a data is coming to a destination okay we need to understand what and all information does the source gives to the destination before transmitting this kind of data. So, okay. So when the source will be transmitting some data, suppose it is doing a write, it will use the AW channel or the write address channel in the AXI4 and put some address in which it want to write. Now we said there will be multiple data transfer. That means we'll be doing multiple writes. Correct. Now this address, this address will be the address of the starting beat B1. Okay. This is the address of this beat. Correct. Now source has to tell some more information, not only the address, but also how much will be the width of this data that we are talking, right? The maximum width of the data that we can transfer in a single shot is n bits. That can be the maximum. But the source might choose to transfer a data like that is less than n bits. Okay. So that is given by a component that is called as AX size. The amount of data, data that the source is going to transfer into the bus in a single shot. Right. That will, this information will be given to the destination before the data is being transferred. Okay. Similarly, also the source also has to inform to the destination that what is going to be the number of bits or the length of my data. Right. So that is given by AX length. Okay. These are all part of address channel signals. Okay. Okay. This, this will be AW length for a write address channel and AR length or AR size for a read address channel. Okay. Now, 
we told that the address is for the first bit correct now this could be any width of data depending upon the the width of which is limited by the maximum amount of data size data bus size right now the first bit address we know from the address that was presented to the in the address channel right either it is a right address channel or the read address channel but the question to the slave will come okay your first bit comes i will put that data into the this particular address that you have given to me in the right address or the read address channel but what about these by these another beats where i should write or read them where i should write into this data or where i should read this data from okay the answer is again the source has to tell how to calculate the address to the destination the the source will tell okay i am giving you the first bit or the first bus address and i am telling you the way you can calculate the address of the next bus relative to the first bit right so either the source can tell you calculate let the address remain same as that of the first bit so that is called as the fixed addressing fixed address or it can tell increment the address whenever for each of the bits okay so this signal is known as aw or ax burst and its values can be fixed increment or wrap just keeping it in the back of the mind so that we could actually identify these things when we go into the write or read transaction okay now let's move forward i hope this makes clear about the burst transfer now let's look into the waveform about a read sorry a write transaction hub so what we have to keep in mind is the transfer will always happen when when a valid ready and a passage of the clock comes okay so if you look at the time um, time we are considering t0 t1 t3 okay t2 so at t t0 there was none of the valid signal been asserted okay so we are going to t1 okay so at t1 the this is aw represent the right at the channel okay all aw valid aw ready all we are seeing is the information about the right address channel okay so what a source is doing is a source is putting the valid information high okay at t1 but it did not get the ready here so the information is not received by the destination but at t2 the valid was also high for the address channel and the ready was also high so at this point of time t2 the address information was been received by the destination okay now the the all of the information not only this address valid ad, not only the address but also the information that we discussed earlier right aw length that shows the length of the transfer and aw size that was the width of the transfer that was also been transferred at this point of time okay now comes the data phase and the source put the data information with the valid signal high so we can see the valid is getting high at the first passage after which the valid w valid that is the right right data channel the valid goes highest this and the first passage is at t3 so the information was actually available to the destination at point t3 but destination was not ready so it kept its w ready high at the after some time and it got the first passage at the t4 so information transfer for the data happens at this point now the slave has the address also the data also okay now if you see the data that is coming that is coming in bits this is the first bit da0 the first valid and the ready came came at first passage this is the first transfer now your w data goes in valid and because we know that this is going 
down. The value is going down here, right? But it doesn't matter because this is not the process. So after this, the source put the second bit of data into the bus, into the data bus. Again, the ready is not high, the ready gets high at the next process and the information, the second bit get transferred at time T6. Similarly, it goes on up till T8. Again, a transfer is made because valid and ready both are high. Okay. Again, at T9, again, the fourth transfer, fourth beat is getting transferred at T9. First beat, second beat, third beat and the fourth beat is getting transferred because valid and ready is high at this point of time. Okay. So this information that the number of beats was how much? 0, 1, 2 and 3. That means 4 was been already presented to the channel while it was giving the address information with this valid and the ready signal that are shown here. That will be trans this inf uh, information about the AW length will also get transferred. Okay, here it is not shown here, but it will. Okay, now once this transfer happens, data is already transferred four bits. Now, one more information will be given by the source that is how to calculate the addresses of these bits that will be given in bit signal AW burst. That we discussed earlier. Okay. So the destination also knows how to calculate the address of the first, second, and the third bit. Okay. Now the information is with the destination and the information destination try to write in its memory for each of the bits bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, and bit 3. Now there could be either scenarios, either the slave would have been able to write this information or there could be a problem writing the information. If the slave was has written the info, if the destination has written the information successfully, it will transfer a response to back to the source saying that whether the information was successfully written or not or it's an error. Right? So in the with the response channel, the destination is providing a response to the source okay so again the same rules applies the valid should be high ready should be high and it is happening at this point of time t10 and the response was been transmitted from the destination to the source okay this actually shows a proper write transaction okay in which the first the master has the authority to do a write or a read so it asserts an address in the address bus and when this information will be moved will be read by the slave it will be at the passage when the passage with valid and ready comes high okay so all of the information was with the slave at that point of time and after that the master uses the data bus for transferring its beats slave is already known about how to calculate the addresses of the beats and the data transfer is happening at valid ready high at the passage of the clock okay now once this information is there with the slave, slave tries to write into, into the memory. There could be a situation wherein the slave could have written the data successfully or there could be some problems. The problems could be like this master is trying to access the read-only memory, then the response could be an error also. So once so uh, once the data, the destination tries to write, write this data into its memory. After that, the master must know that whether the transaction that I sent to the slave has been received properly or not. Okay. For that purpose, the slaves send back their response for this. Okay. That could be an okay or an error response. Okay. We'll see this um, right operation, but for a basic idea, this is good enough. The last point that I would like to discuss before we end up this is the starting and the ending of a transaction. So by a transaction, we mean a write or a read command, right? So what is the starting of the transaction in this case? It is the passage at which the first 
address was been transmitted. So here is the point where the master actually started the transaction, putting the address information into the bus and putting a valid signal. This is the process at which the information is actually available to the destination for a read purpose. So this is the start of the transaction. Okay. This is the start, starting point. Now, when the right transaction will get ended, will set to be completed when the response has been read by the master. So, what is the point at which the response was been read? This passage, right? This is called as what? Endpoint. Not the transaction completion point, correct? Now, within this period, the transaction is said to be outstanding pending. Okay. So, you will come to know that AXA actually supports multiple outstanding transactions. That we will discuss later. But what is the meaning of an outstanding transaction? We should understand that transaction is outstanding means the transaction has started but yet not completed okay 